Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Wars End History Story. This week is video number 5 in the series about Wars End public houses and I hope you will enjoy it. As said previously, this isn't going to be a full history of each pub or club. It's a very basic history, which might also include a few little news articles about things that happened there in the past, or maybe some things connected to them. There will be more details about some pubs than others, as some just really don't seem to have much information, and others, like the first one in this video, have a little bit more. And due to the lack of information about some of the ones covered in this video, I have made it about four instead of the usual three, as it feels more like a bit of a pub crawl for memories and more than history information. But like I say, I hope you will still enjoy it and find it interesting. The first pub that I am covering this week is actually a club and it's the Coronation Club. And I know that a lot of people refer to this club as simply the Corry. Of course, the building that stands on the corner of the High Street and Coronation Street is not the original building, as the original club was actually on Park Road. It was quite possibly given the name Coronation Club as it was founded in the year of the coronation of King George V which has been a general thought for many years. However, I didn't actually find any evidence to support this idea, but I did think that it was worth mentioning. Although it now stands on the bottom of Coronation Street, it was obviously not aimed, named after the street, but that must have seemed like the logical place to move it to when the club were looking to build something bigger than the original club that they had. I can certainly find details of a coronation club as far back as 1912, but as said, it did start life a little before that. Originally, it was started in one house in Park Road, and as the club grew, so another house was bought and the building was extended, until eventually it was decided that something much bigger was needed. The club committee had been really good with money over the years, and in 1973, they were able to buy a plot of land for £2,400. They did have a fair amount of money behind them, but they did still have to borrow some £70,000 to get the club built. The club's membership at the time was just shy of 1,200 members, and they were building a club with a concert room able to seat 450 and a lounge suitable for 200 people and a bar for 150 people along with a games room with a snooker table. When the club moved the old building on Park Road became the council offices and I do remember going there to pay council tax and obviously paying rents as well and in much later years that section of the street where the curry used to be was demolished and new houses were built there in around 2014. The new building on Coronation Street is, again, as I have said with other clubs, not the nicest looking building, but clubs were never built to really look pretty, and no doubt the less detail in the building, the cheaper they would be. In 1979, Helen Worth, who some will know better as Gail of the TV soap Coronation Street, visited not just the street but also the club as part of a countrywide tour of all the Coronation Streets. And I do believe that Chris Quentin, a.k.a. Brian Tilsley, was also there with Helen. In around 1989, the club spent a further £42,000 on refurbishing the concert room. And in a newspaper article in 1989 about the refurbishment, the club said that they put their success down to its loyal customers. And I do imagine that this is still the same today. The Curry is another place that I've never actually been in, but I am sure many wards enders will have good memories of it. And some of you probably still go there now, as in 2023, it is still open and trading as a club. The next pub that I am looking at is the Dorset Arms. In terms of age, this is quite a young pub as it wasn't built until the estates surrounding it were built. The idea to build the Dorset was so that there was a public house close to the new estates that were springing up all around it after the war. 
There isn't an exact date for when it was built, but one of the first known owners is a James Duchar or Duchar Limited of Newcastle. And the first known licensee is Edward Dunleavy. And both of those come with a date of February the 8th, 1951. The first mention I could find in any of the local papers was for 1957, when the then licensee Frank Davison had won a licensed trade diploma. These were apparently given to landlords after a short course intended to improve the standard of custom given at the pubs to their regulars, or for the locals as it said in the article. It was also Frank Davison in 1959 who raised the alarm when the newly renovated boys club on Station Road caught fire. He had noticed smoke rising from the back of the building where the boiler was situated. Just as a little side note, it was said that at the height of the fire at the boys club, which had started at around 5pm, the smoke had drifted over Station Road making it impossible for drivers to see where they were going. No one was injured in the fire as the club was empty at the time and all the trophies had been locked away in a fireproof safe. However, the building was gutted and did have to be rebuilt. Back to the door set and I will just say that I have been in there many times and I've even had a Sunday lunch there once or twice. And I'm sure that many Wars Enders have good memories of the pub too as the door set was a well-known and well-used pub and until recent years it was still trading as a pub, but it is now the Dorset Arms Hotel and is no longer a public house. The next pub I am talking about is once again actually a club, and that is the Comrades on Station Road. The Comrades part of the name was actually a, a much longer name when it was originally founded back in 1918, these days, the name on the front says Walls End Ex-Servicemen and Working Men's Club. But like a lot of places, most will know this as the Comrades. The original location, I believe, had been on the High Street, but by around 1919, the current building was open, and a lot of people refer to this as being the Comrades in the Dip on Station Road. The club has had several alterations over the years, so whether or not it resembles the original building is something that I can't say for sure. Some of the articles I found about it over the years were things like in April of 1925, when dinners were to be served to children whose fathers were not working. Money had been raised by various well-known people of the area, including the then Mayor, Mr W. Forrest. In early June of 1944, a safe was stolen from the club, containing around £350 and some war bonds. The safe had been found beside the river, but the contents were missing, and a week later there were still no leads as to who had done it or where the money had gone. I did try to find a follow-up article, but didn't find one, so if anyone has any more details about the stolen safe i couldn't say that do please let me know i am sure some of you will remember the fire from around 2013 as well when the club was badly damaged after that it was renovated and updated i have been in this club many times as i used to meet family there when i lived quite close by and i'm sure that many walls enders will know this club well and many of you will have good memories of the place In 2023, the Comrades is still open and still trading as a club. The final pub, and the fourth one, the extra one, is once again another club, and this time it is the Engineers. Now, I know that I've been up and down the high street in these videos and seem to have passed this club by, but I hadn't forgotten it. I just knew that there wasn't very much about it, so I was saving it so that I could add it to another shorter video. Again, this is a club that isn't quite in its original location, although it is still on Coach Road. The original Engineers was on the opposite side of the road to where it is now, and it had been there for many years. Hello, no matter how much searching I have done, I cannot find either an opening date 
or when it moved into the old co-op building opposite. Sadly, sometimes the important information like this is lost and can't be found online, in books or in old newspaper articles, though I would suspect that those who run the club will have a much better idea of the dates than what I do. Some of the information that I did find from news articles, though, are things like in 1945, the Engineers Club raised £1,000 for its members who had served during World War II. £1,000 would be around about £55,000 today, so it really was a massive amount and a brilliant effort from the club. In January of 1936, the club was holding a Go As You Please competition. It did state that there would be good prizes, but it didn't actually say what they were going to be. Whereas another local club was offering prizes of around £1. And £1 in 1936 would be around £90 a day, so it was a canny prize. Sadly, there really isn't much history to tell about the engineers, and it's another one that I have never been inside. But I am sure that many Wars Enders will have memories from here, and some of you probably still go there. As in 2023, it is still open and still trading as a club. So I hope that you have enjoyed this little pub crawl, as I feel like I can't really call it a history story completely, as there was so little history to tell for some of the pubs and clubs included in this video. I do thank you all very much for watching, and I do hope to see you all again very soon.